It's going. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, Parramatta. Uh, we're, we're here to tell you about the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and uh, what I'm going to be speaking about today, is, as God has asked me to speak about, is dominion. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, we remember uh, about Adam and Eve uh, when they were in the garden. And um, when Adam sinned, he, he used his free will uh, as to whether he obeyed God or not. And, of course, as we know, he disobeyed God. And he was to obey God's laws. Uh, and so the fall came into the world, which he used to have dominion over. He, uh, God asked him to name the, uh, uh, the animals, as you know. And of course, can you imagine a tiger or a bear coming up and being completely placid? And he would just give them the name. And uh, they would obey whatever he had to say. And so he lost his dominion over all the creation. And it was a gift from Almighty God. And he wants you to have that power, to show love and to have a sound mind. We walk by faith, hand in hand with Jesus, our beloved friend and saviour. So would you like to have that dominion in, in every moment of your life? So you can fight the devil, the world and the flesh, as the Bible says. So Jesus came to earth desiring to be in your heart and life to give you a new life. In Hebrews it says, he is our high priest. He was tempted in every way as we are. He understands the situations in your life. And he gave his life on the cross for us and took the penalty for our sins. Could you ask him into your life today? In Luke 22:42, Jesus says, let your will be done. He suffered, but by his daily obedience to Almighty God, his Heavenly Father, he was a man of dominion. He remained perfect. Jesus' ministry, released then and now, gives power and dominion into the life of every believer. All who believe in him receive the keys of the kingdom of God. We rejoice in our freedom, and we would like to see everyone have that freedom. Colossians says he made a public spectacle being triumphant over them. In Isaiah 53:12, our Saviour is a refuge for the oppressed, a shield in time of trouble. Psalm 99, Psalm 91 and 2, Matthew 11, 28 and 29. Jesus wants to give you a life of joy in all situations. Glory to God. Hope in the Bible says we can rely on God for a future full of his goodness, love, grace, peace, and mercy. Jeremiah 29, 11 says that God has a plan for your life, for your future and for your hope, and for good and not for evil. That's in Jeremiah 29, 11. We, we have victory and we're glorified. We have joy, Timothy 1, it says. And Jesus Christ is our hope. Romans 5.2, Galatians 5.5, 5, Colossians 1.27, 1 Thessalonians 5.8, Titus 2.13, and Titus 3.7. But the, uh, in, in, our, in the Word where God is teaching us and we can go there for every situation from Genesis, Gen Genesis to Revelation. Jesus will return reigning for a thousand years. Dominion is assured and all life will show forth his glory. The Holy Spirit will teach us how to have victory in life. Isaiah 11.2 says, He can give us wisdom, knowledge, counsel, understanding, and teach us how to fear God. Almighty El Shaddai, Yahweh Sidkenu, Yahweh Mikadesh, Mighty God, a God of power and might seated on the throne in heaven, and he wants to reach out with his hand and, and touch you and be in your life. He wants to have that relationship with you. And Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans. I will send you a help and a comforter. And so the Holy Spirit has come to help us in every situation in our life. And so I would like to say a blessing over you in Numbers 6, 20, uh, 4 to 26, where the Lord God will be gracious unto you. A smiling countenance will gaze upon you, and he will give you peace. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.